Hello everyone, my name is Terry Polish and I'm the Global Engineering Advisor here at Carbo Ceramics. And today I have with me David Norman who over the years has worked with us on many projects and uh, with his background in technology, he's always coming up with new ideas and, and problems that he's like solved. And today we're gonna talk a little bit about the development of Cryptosphere, uh, which David uh, at, a, at his former employer uh, worked with us to, to develop uh, uh, the idea and the concept. So. Uh, why don't we go ahead and get started here, David, uh, if you could maybe give us a little bit of a background on your role uh, at, the, at the service company you were at and also at the oil and gas company and kind of how that tied into technology development. Yeah, um, I, uh, I had worked uh, for about 20 years with uh, a service company and, and uh, had uh, worked with Carbo's products before and, and we're very familiar with a lot of the technology that uh, Carbo had brought to the table and we uh, we kept that relationship even when I went over and became uh, part of a, an oil company and when I was there I was in the technology divisions of the or the companies of the of those uh, of that oil company and so we developed a lot of uh, technology that we needed for different projects and the projects were um, ranged from uh, some simple things all the way to very complicated things where we were at serial number 0001 so uh, we developed a lot of things for the, that were first. Yeah. So when it came to the precursor to Cryptosphere, uh, what was it, uh, what was the problem you were trying to solve? What were, what were, what was your key components that you were, you were presented with that really prompted the, the looking into? Well, normally the, the uh, normal materials that were used uh, uh, weren't uh, always good to the kind of stress levels that we were uh, normally dealing with uh, when we initially did a lot of the frack pack work and the fracturing that was being done offshore and, and out in the deep water. Uh, when, we, when we got to, to some of the really deep materials, I mean the, the deep uh, uh, lower tertiary uh, activity, the closure stresses that we were encountering were very, very high, mm -hmm. and uh, because of that, we uh, we needed some material that wouldn't um, deteriorate uh, the conductivity with cycles or with the stress. And uh, it's not so much the 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 uh, the, the time that the stress is uh, or the the quantity of stress that's on it. It's cycling it and cycling it over time that causes the problems. And, and there's also a failure point in the formation that made it much more difficult to, uh, to utilize the, the propens that would actually crumble into different pieces and uh, create problems for the conductivity of the, fr of the fracture itself. Right, so I'm curious what, uh, I know you talked a little bit about this earlier, but what uh, what drew you to Carbo? Why why come to Carbo? You had other options out there. Yeah, well, we we tested <laughs> a lot of propens, and uh, Carbo was the the main one that uh, I dealt with. But uh, we there were other uh, suppliers that that tried to uh, um, produce a similar kind of product, and they just. Uh, the, it's the same kind of technology that Carbo was using, so that there there weren't any distinguishing differences between it and the and the Carbo uh, HSP. So um, uh, we we wanted to make that quantum leap, as right. it were, to the to the next level. And I, I first contacted uh, uh, Carbo and and the technology side of the company and. And uh, we started going over some of those uh, requirements. And uh, initially, we looked at uh, certain kinds of minerals, changing the mineral, like titanium or something of that nature. And it didn't work very well. And uh, then uh, we were still in the in the same old mode of technology as far as the way to uh, to uh, generate the propens, which uh, the centering kind of uh, environment. Then uh, in the process, Carbo came up with a new technology, a new means by which to manufacture the propens, and it lent itself very, very nicely to, uh, to 
continuing with the uh, current uh, ores that you were using, just making them much more uh, dense, less less uh, impurities, less uh, um, uh, porosity and so uh, yeah, yep. in, internal porosities and those kind of things. Uh, less flaws within the within the profit during the processing and so David uh, as you know in the cryptosphere process we uh, the the beauty of that process that we developed was that it gave us attributes that we didn't have in in a standard ceramic uh, manufacturing process and they're primarily of course geared around how we pelletize or we make the pellets uh, so what I thought would be interesting would be, could you maybe just walk through kind of the specific benefits that go with each one of these attributes? Perhaps we could start with the spherical nature, the very round and very smooth surface. Yeah, when, when you first start doing, uh, looking for different propents, the density and the angle of impingement actually make a big difference in the erosion effects that occur. So the, the sphericity actually worked itself very nicely. Uh, to eliminate a lot of the damage that was created even with bauxite or even uh, some of the other lighter materials that, that you make in the uh, 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 ceramic uh, environment that, that's being used. So uh, the, the sphericity really plays well into that. Very good. And so how about uh, another attribute, that being the, the lack of internal flaws, the uh, more densified yeah. product? This is a very important aspect because uh, the cyclic uh, issue where you cycle, uh, expose the profit to cyclic stress, you end up with a uh, uh, less of a problem there because the material doesn't have the flaws in it that initiate the damage that's created initially. So it, it makes it a lot more uh, beneficial for the longevity of the, of the prop in Particularly itself. in the Gulf of Mexico. Particularly in the Gulf of Mexico, at, and particularly when you get above 12,000 PSI. Uh, a lot of people like to say that their uh, HSP is good for those kind of ranges of stress, but uh, once, you cycle it. once you cycle it and once you get into the investigations, you find out pretty quickly that, you know, a lot of those claims are, are right. not true. <laughs> right, right, right. So it's, it's round, it's smooth, it's also got a very densified pellet. How about the third attribute being the single mesh size? Uh, the, single the single pellet. mesh size, uh, actually, for sand control and the, and the, and the use of it in, uh, in formations that generate fines, it's very, very beneficial because that material has a uh, uniform uh, pore throat size because it is a uniform mesh mm -hmm. and it is spherical. It's like stacking BBs. Mm -hmm. And so you have a, a defined uh, uh, pore throat size and you can filter things at the surface. So at the sand face propant pack interface uh, is where you filter things. So, so uh, you are able to eliminate the, the, a lot of the fines that would penetrate into the interval, uh, into the pack, and create damage within the pack. So I, I think in the first wells, you, you actually had put HSP in some wells, and so then you switched over to the cryptosphere, so you have a pretty yeah. good head-to-head -head comparison. Yes, yes, that's, that's exactly what happened. We, uh, we were developing cryptosphere, and, right. and it wasn't quite... Uh, accepted in the, in, in, through the qualification processes yet. And uh, when, uh, so it was, we proceeded with the HSP. So we, there's quite a few opportunities there to make direct comparisons between HSP and, and the cryptosphere. So, so how about applications? I mean, would, uh, how's the product performed from what you've seen in, in your, your previous life and I guess even in your current life? Yeah. When, when uh, before I left, there, there were a couple of projects that we had looked at where uh, the current HSP material that was being used was was showing the, the degradation, uh, the 80 percent uh, decline in conductivity kind of thing. And it was also, uh, some of it would, could be attributed to the, um, the way we input it in the ground. Uh, we used to scorecard things, and it would allow us the opportunity to find out if we addressed 
the kind of issues that would would be the alternatives to the kind of decline that we were seeing. And when we uh, started utilizing the uh, cryptosphere for the the different projects that we were on, um, they the longevity certainly became apparent because you didn't see the decay that that you saw otherwise in the productivity, which translated into higher skins. You also didn't see, um, uh, you saw initial product production out of the wells that uh, was much better than originally planned for. And there's been projects since I've been a consultant that uh, have resulted in essentially the same same thing. It's, it's for uh, certain kinds of applications. The more sand control you need, the more you would need this kind of technology. And the uh, higher the the, uh, the stresses environment that you're in, you would need this material. Right. So if, if you can obtain the same attributes of sphericity and uh, density and cyclic uh, or the lack of cyclic deterioration, then if, if, if it's cryptosphere, if it's uh, uh, lower density materials that you create in the same fashion, that is much better material to use than one that has uh, irregular surfaces or uh, you know poor um, sphericity and that kind of thing. So, right. how's it been to work with Carbo and particularly from a development standpoint? And and did you feel like it was a positive experience and you you uh, were able to stay in the loop uh, with the development and, and have positive impact? Uh, yeah. That, that was one of the things that I liked working with, with Carbo about uh, on these, these types of uh, developments that, that I've been part of with, with Carbo's uh, help. We, I was always kept abreast of what was being done. Mm -hmm. I was always kept abreast of uh, the quality of the material, that, the product that came out and of the uh, uh, different uh, techniques that were being developed for for it, so it, it was always a very positive experience from the standpoint of being uh, involved and being able to help make corrections when it's needed, and to keep the focus as well. A lot of times you'll you'll give somebody an assignment and they'll run off and go try to do it, and then you end up with what they end up with. Right. That when not necessarily that, what you wanted. Not necessarily addressing all the issues that are necessary and. And because they didn't test everything that you right. needed it to be tested as, and but that wasn't the case with Carbo. So, David, during the development process, or maybe even after the product was developed, uh, were there any hiccups, or were there any things along the way that yeah. were unexpected? Yeah, there were. Uh, we had we had uh, I had some really big concerns around the density of the product. The uh, that, that was one of the reasons we had talked about originally using different minerals like titanium and things of that nature. So when, when uh, the product came out that it was, uh, uh, the original product came out, the uh, density was very high. And it had, we had uh, transport concerns, both in terms of getting it into the, into the uh, fracture itself because there's certain uh, characteristics of the fluids in, in terms of shear history that make it a little more difficult to use. And then there's uh, aspects of reversing out and the density of the material, uh, the slip velocities in it and that kind of thing in different environments. So the, the density really weighed heavy on the, on the use of the material. So uh, Carbo took that to heart and went back and altered the, the, uh, the uh, aspects around that and uh, actually have lightened the density of the material so that it's uh, Fallen in line closer to what the uh, HSP is, so right. that that worked out very well. So now well. we've kind of gotten over that hurdle. Of gotten over that hurdle, out. exactly. You can go back up to the higher concentrations. You, you can go up to the higher concentration, and, and you don't have to worry about the quantity. Uh, a lot of times, we'll we'll talk about pounds per foot in the in the uh, fracture itself, which is a volume, and when you have uh, the same pounds per square foot being uh, placed into the fracture, 
if you have a higher density material, it's still smaller in, in, uh, in volume. So it's, uh, that, that becomes a bigger issue. So yeah, that's, that, that's one of them that we, that uh, collectively we've come together and, and uh, solved. Right, very good. Well, David, I want to thank you for your time. Um, I certainly have enjoyed working with you as we've developed Cryptosphere and kind of looking forward to the next big idea you have that we can help you uh, solve or, or uh, fix. So, well, Carbo is certainly going to be on the list to be included with that. So, Well, thank you. Yeah.